Hey y'all, it's Anime Kamen, and today I'm going to be live reacting to Machi Kaido Mazoko episode 8. And just a heads up, y'all, I'm going to start this live reaction in 3, 2, 1, go! Let's see what we get. Alright. Aw, poor. <laughs> poor Yuko! But then again, we know she's not going to do anything because of the preview, though. <laughs> That's adorable! Alright, good, good. Damn it, Yuko! You don't want to lure her. <laughs> Did you actually say that out loud? Oh, okay, it wasn't her in monologue, probably. <laughs> it makes, but the way it sounds, it's... <laughs> what the fuck is this battle? If only she knew that shit wasn't fierce, this magic world chick. Ah, Yuko, she really does suck at hiding shit, doesn't she? Ah, <laughs> uh, pound down. Oh, <laughs> oh, the cute little Yuka with the Tika. That's adorable. <laughs> oh, man. That's the only slight complaint I had about last next week's um preview. If they would have not shown us what was gonna happen, instead of laughing, I'd probably be more scared for Yuko, you know? I'd say that's the only thing they could have probably done that first sequence better. Like, had they not shown their cards of the Matcher Girl not <clears throat> Cause we know in the preview the Matcher Girl from the looks of it she means well, but had they not shown that they could have probably gone a different route and probably made things look epic in a way so that the audience would be like, oh shit, what's gonna happen to Yuko? But the writing here is con is really done to the point where even though you know what's gonna happen somewhat, it's still hilarious. So I gotta give credit to that at the very least. And yeah, I gotta say, um, can't wait to see what's up with Larry shit's gonna happen. <laughs> But really, that's adorable. A fierce battle? <laughs> Who the fuck spreads th that those rumors? <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> then again, I, I guess it might have been from Momo, and I could see why she would say fierce battle to have a magic girl just show up quickly, too. You know? But anyway, let's see what's gonna happen. Woo. The cursed fruit, but where the sour Mikan? Hmm. Mikan. <laughs> kind of like the way her is moving in the scene. Hmm. <laughs> oh, she's just worried about her well-bleeding. Oh, snap! come out of the, the costume or more like the tear juice. She could have literally just excused herself saying that she was, um... She could have just excused herself saying that that's part of the costume design. <laughs> oh... <laughs> I feel sorry for her, this is so adorable. <laughs> Yo! 
<laughs> Damn, who'd have thought she'd be so weak? You call that. You went on a different match with a girl, would feel sorry for her. I love all the hardcore loots. Oh, the name is Mikon. Mmm. Oh, alright. Uh, I'm kind of with her. It kind of does. Think that with the vague message, Momo Dad. Oh, that's adorable. Now that is a friend right there. Now that's a sis, sis, sister-like friend. Yeah, I'm with the narrator there. Nothing wrong with having Metro Girls as friends. In home, in a man. I mean, nothing wrong with being a demon girl and having magical girls as friends. There you go. In the case of Yuko. Oh my. <laughs> Oh yeah, she just used to being called Shamiko. Oh, hmm. Oh, that's cute. Hey, maybe we can see some bonding between the two. That'd be nice. Yuka was there. Mmm. That's actually good wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I can see why the ancestor with Lilith would think that because Mikan doesn't seem isn't mean towards Lilith. Like um Whoa. <laughs> it's the tear juice. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Ah, uh, that is that is a smile that must be protected. Bullshit, she's enjoying this, Mikan. Oh. Mmm, that is a good question. Have you noticed there's some spikes in the fucking trash? Jeez, put the, at least put the spikes. 
spikes, put the soft part, and then put the end tip of the spike in so that they don't rip. That's what no. Because it can rip the trash bag. Oh. Understandable. explains why she was all saying stuff like nothing would have happened when she was talking to Yuko. Oh. Alright, this is a cute little mid-credit thing. Yeah, it's mid-credit. Just had to make sure. I always like the way Yuko's tell moves. It's so cute. It's so fucking adorable. Oh. Oh my. I <laughs> like Momo's face. <laughs> oh. Oh my. I mean, at least he's trying. Ah, oh, it's always good to see Momo smile. Oh yeah, I mean Yuko obviously didn't mean that. <laughs> hmm. Damn. She's gonna. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right. <clears throat> Aww. I like the music to play in the background. It's really sweet. How do you get them teaming stuff with the SSR? <laughs> It's actually pretty badass, actually, that they explain it. Oh, that's sweet to see all three of them train. And it could help inspire Yuko too when you train with more people. Because that's how exercises. The more you train with people, the more pumped up you get. Oh. This is this. Oh, yeah. That ain't necessarily naked. Yeah, that is true. I think this time, yeah, I, I'm with the Chamiko this time. She wins the argument. I mean, she would fit in a fighting game, if anything else. Especially in. Oh. Hmm.
Aww, those are so adorable. <laughs> Yo, why'd you think of her saying pervert? <laughs> Found herself pervert. Mm hmm. Oh, actually, good. I could get some power feats. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> that was quick! <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. Oh, I want to see that. Oh. <laughs> Look at the balls. <laughs> Whoa! There's a broken paper. Paper? That has an epic power feat. Oh. I mean, Lilith, <laughs> poor Lilith. Aww. <laughs> Damn! Even has the bite marks too of the snake, poor ancestor. Oh, it's the dog again. That's like the second time. <laughs> Just like a bark center. <laughs> oh. Whoa. I mean, damn! That was out of the left field! Whoa! <laughs> That's savage! Mm hmm. Oh my! <laughs> oh my! Crazy to see that just the backlash of a little blood being taken down. It does sort of up the stakes though. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh shit, those birds are cute though. Even babies! Oh, it's adorable! Mmm. Oh. Oh my. Wait, that sounds awful. I can't blame Mika for saying no. How is she feeling to her? That's crazy. At least we're seeing more of 
Yuko's positive character, though. Racine her feel empathy. Racine her kindness. That's what I really like about this sequence. That you can have some nice drama character development sequences in this anime from time to time, and not just comedy. Yes, now that is character development right there. Whoa, they're close enough to kiss. <laughs> not distant. Aww. <laughs> I like the way she just stares off in the different direction. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! That probably just pumped her up. Oh my. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, shit. She's cute even when she's crying. But, oh, I feel sorry for her. <laughs> but at the very least, she. At the very least, she's using her crisis management more. All that stuff doesn't seem like it'd be so useful against them. <laughs> Alright, I love this episode. I'm gonna rate it. I'll, I'm gonna rate it in 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was great, actually. Let me explain why. The surprising amount of character development. You have Yuko talking with conviction when she's all like, she's gonna try her best to become stronger there at the end of the episode when she finds out that if you take too much blood from a magical girl, they can just dematerialize. So I do like that because it gives you fa multiple facets to Yuko's character. It shows you she's kind, and that, at the very least, as far as magical girls go, at least for the ones she's comfortable with, it shows you that she's not going to take all their blood completely in that case. She doesn't want them to go to that kind of suffering. At least that's what the sequence implies. So I do like that. And it shows you some sympathy for you that Yuka has towards Momo too, because that was hella hella sweet right there. Especially when she tells Momo that she's gonna try her best. That was a nice character development scene because now she's saying things with conviction. <clears throat> because when the series first started out, Yoko, I mean yeah, she had the goal of taking blood from a macho girl, but she wasn't that serious here. Now she's taking the goal of becoming stronger seriously at the very least, so that's character development. Oh, they're hanging out! Oh. Okay, now that looks fun! Or right, I'm pumped up for next week's episode. So that's why I thought it did well from the character standpoint. And then as far as the comedy goes, I actually liked it. Wasn't the funniest episode of the series, but it made me laugh, I gotta say. I like the sequences where you had, like, the fucking tear juice I mean, the tears coming out of Yuko's outfit. I was like, how the fuck is that even possible? But I love it. It was adorable, and the scene where you Mikan just takes off the Yuko's um, mascot costume was hella hilarious. And then the sequences were just... Noba just pulls out of Yuko's tail whenever Yuko wants to not train us. Sorry, that shit was also adorable, too. And I was like, <laughs> yo...
<laughs> kind of looks like a baby trying to prevent their dog from leaving the room when they pull on the tail of their dog. That's hell of adorable. I love it. I love it. And stuff like that really made this episode lively. And it made it a joy to watch. Then additionally, those jokes like Yuko getting Lilith mixed up for a fucking um, a bottle of tea. I was just like, how the fuck? But then again, that is our Yuko. Our Yuko isn't really the smartest individual in the shed. So I guess you could say it's par for course whenever it comes to anything involving our Yuko. So I love that too, the comedy, you know? Just taking advantage of um, Yuko not being the smartest individual and making jokes out of it also makes this episode really, really lively. So that's why I felt I did well from the script standpoint and from the character standpoint. I thought I did well. I thought Mikon was a little nice in tradition. And I thought she balances things out. Because you have Momo who has like this kind of thing against Lilith. But you already it's implying that... Lilith and Mekon, there isn't much adversity against these two, so I like that. And then I like how with Mekon, she says, Oh no, don't give me praise, but then when she blushes, whenever she gets praise, you can tell she hella fucking enjoys that shit. So I kind of like that shit. That shit is kind of adorable, and she should make the conversation more dynamic now that it isn't just Yuko interacting with Momo. Now it's going to be Mekon interacting with the cast that time, so that's why I thought she was a fine addition. I love the Yuko character development. And the animation and art was pretty nice, I gotta say. And that's why I... Oh, and the voice performances were great. And that's why I rated this episode an 8.5 out of 10, y'all. So, anyways, everyone, these are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment on your thoughts on the episode in the comments below. Rate the video, subscribe, share it, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Because I'm definitely pumped up to see what's going to happen next. Alright, thank y'all so much for watching, everyone. Have a great and safe day. Bye-bye.